welcome to another story time. If you're new to my channel, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. I hope that you stay and come along for the journey. We have a really cool family here on my channel, and this is a story time that I've been meaning to share for a while. It's one of those stories that, in retrospect, is really funny, but at the time, you were grounded and in so much trouble that it wasn't really funny at all. Like many of my other story times, this takes place back in high school. It was my sophomore year, the beginning of my sophomore year, and at this time, I was very active in youth group. I was really big into church and going all the time. It was kind of like my little escape from school. And I will admit there have been points in my life where I feel like religion was kind of pushed on me just because I was too young to make that decision for myself. Like I would go with my family because I didn't have a choice. But at this time in my life, I really loved going. That was my thing. I went all the time. I would go with my friends to like their youth groups at their churches throughout the other days of the week. So I pretty much went five days a week. I went all the freaking time. And the one that I went to, my church, we need a fake name for this church. How do you even give a church a fake name? Okay, we're gonna call this church Wonderland. I don't know why, don't ask me. That's just the only name I could really come up with right now. So Wonderland, like my main church, the youth group was on Thursday nights, but I hadn't really been going regularly just because I had been so active in the other youth groups that kind of took place the same day and time, you know? So I'd only been there a couple times throughout this year. And in this story, a couple of my friends were with me, so we're also going to give them fake names. Let's do Mackenzie, Lucy, and Bailey. I've mentioned a couple of them in other story times. So this time of the year, I was very active in water polo. That was the sport I was playing. If you guys have seen my other videos, I've talked a little bit about that. And a couple of these girls were on the team with me. They weren't necessarily church members, but they wanted to go with me because after water polo, I was going to quick change out of my suit and run over there and worship and do my thing. And they were like, hey, can we go with you? It'll be fun. And so I'm that type of person. I never like to push youth group church anything like that on other people I feel like that's their own personal decision I would never want to pressure anyone but if people want to go with me I'm like yeah for sure I want them to feel comfortable I want them to have a good time and like why not of course I want my friends to go with me it's more fun that way so my mom takes us to youth group I didn't know how my license at the time I was technically old enough but I had failed the test so she dropped us off and I told my mom that she didn't need to worry about picking us up because we had friends we were meeting there who were a grade above us they were pretty much the same age as us but one of them had their license we're gonna call him Billy it was my best friend's older brother and then some of his friends so anyways we were meeting up with them there they told us that they would drop us off afterwards it was all good we walk into church we meet up with them we're sitting by them we're worshiping which is basically just like singing music and after worship if you guys have ever been to a small group normally they break you off into I'm sorry if you guys have ever been to a youth group normally they break you off into small groups which is like little intimate groups of like five to ten people ish where you talk about things and it's a little bit more personal so after they announced that they were going to be doing that and everyone got up to like walk into their little groups I knew I was like okay I don't belong to one of these because I haven't really been here regularly my friends certainly don't belong to one of these small groups because they've never been to this church and this church was huge like Wonderland was very big even though I went there every week for Sunday service I still didn't really know my way around it was very easy to get lost it was a two-story building with like a ton of hallways and corridors and whatnot and so I knew there was like a ton of people and they were gonna go all throughout the church and we just were not going to be together in these little small groups my friends were giving me that look like Allie I enjoy being here but I do not want to be split up right now please don't do this to me I knew that if we told someone like we don't have a group they would have split us up because the groups were just really small we weren't all going to be able to be together our guy friends that we were getting a ride home with they were like hey guys we're actually gonna head over to Wendy's in a minute here and get some frosties do you guys want to come they were our ride home for one so I felt bad expecting them to chill at Wendy's for like another hour and a half or so for us to be done and then take us home if they were gonna dip out early. And for two, my friends were giving me that look like, yeah, let's go get a Frosty. Please, let's avoid this whole awkward being alone and having to talk to strangers thing. Let's just like leave now. So of course I understood. I was like, yeah, that's fine. So we get up to leave. We start walking down the hallway. Like we get up to leave the auditorium room where everyone was singing and it was a good time to leave because everyone was getting up and breaking into their small groups. So it wasn't like we were leaving in the middle of anyone singing or anything. Like there was a ton of commotion going on. People were walking around. It's just kind of like when you're in school and someone's giving a speech and then they're finished. So it's a good time to get up and go to the bathroom. But there was this lady in the huge room. Like she worked there. She was a little bit older. She was probably in her 30s and she was pregnant. That's like the one thing I have to say to like give a description. She was this really big pregnant lady. Like probably about to give birth. She was sort of giving us a stank eye like, do you even go here? 
And I did go there technically, but like I said, I didn't go regularly to the youth group, just the church, and that was with my parents. It wasn't anywhere where she would like personally know me. A lot of the kids that went to Wonderland Church, they went like every single day. They were volunteering, doing choir, etc. Like they were very well known in the church and I wasn't like at that level at all. So I chose to ignore it while she's glaring at us. We walk out down the hallway, downstairs, and as soon as we step outside the building, I believe it was raining this day, so someone actually went over to like grab the car and they were gonna pull it up and we were gonna go in and drive to Wendy's. Out of nowhere, this pregnant lady, we're gonna call her Judy, okay? So Judy walks outside, like she opens the door, startles all of us, just like out of nowhere. And she's mad, like she's really angry, just taking her job a little bit too seriously. And I hate when adults do this because it's like, you work in a church, you're supposed to be nice to people, you're supposed to make people want to come back and feel welcome, but whatever, Judy's just like, Where do you think you're going? And I was like, oh, we're going over to Wendy's, you know, our friends are leaving and they're right home, and she was like, No, 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 no. They're allowed to leave. You girls need to stay. So for whatever reason, this just really pissed me off. She was cool with the guys leaving, but not us. And she didn't care if we didn't have a ride home. And I mean, honestly, we could have called one of our parents to pick us up, but we had already told all of them we had a ride. And we wanted to get a frosty at Wendy's because my friends felt a little bit awkward. I tried to tell her like, hey, my friends are new here. I just want them to feel comfortable and kind of ease their way into youth group. I don't want to pressure them at all to stay here if they're not ready. And she just didn't care. And of course, like, I get it that that is her job. And she feels like Wonderland Church is going to be liable if something happens to us. But we were old enough, like we were 16, 17. Our friends were the same age as us. That's why I don't know why she let the guys leave and not us. And our parents would not care if we went to Wendy's. So I'm just like, Okay, so we walk back inside and the guys are out in the parking lot waiting for us. They're texting us like, hey, we're just gonna wait and then you guys can sneak back out and we'll leave. And we figured like, hey, this lady's doing her job, but is she really gonna care if we leave after that? She can't be in any sort of trouble because she already told us not to leave, right? We go back upstairs and we're just kind of relentlessly like, okay, like I don't wanna be here. Like we wanna go get our Frosty and the guys are waiting for us. And it was just really rude, like the way she came at us. And then she's in the auditorium and now she's straight like, glaring us down. It wasn't like a subtle thing anymore. Like her eyes were on us like a hawk. So we're just like, okay, whatever, kind of walking around as everyone's forming in their small groups because not that much time had passed. And then the second she takes her eyes off of us, we walk out the door again. We kind of act as if we're walking towards the bathroom. And the bathroom wasn't too close. Like we had to walk down a really long hallway. And you know when someone's following you, but you don't know they're following you, like you didn't see it happen, but you just feel like someone's behind you and watching you, like you have that feeling like someone in your peripheral is right there. So we're walking, it's Bailey, Lucy, Mackenzie and I, like the four of us, like three other girls and me. And Bailey's like, dude, I swear, Judy is right behind us. Like I know she's following us, but what was she going to do if we were going to the bathroom, right? She was probably waiting to see if we were gonna like go farther than the bathroom and like dip down the hall, which we were going to do because we were determined to get this frosty. Like we weren't messing around. At this point we were kind of like, okay, if she's really challenging us like that, like we can't leave. Now we really want to get a frosty. I don't know, maybe that's me being super stubborn. That's just kind of the way I am. If someone tells me I can't do something and I don't think it's logical, it makes me want to do it even more. So Bailey proceeds to look back and Judy's right there. She goes, hey guys, on the count of three, we're all gonna run. And we were like, no, 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 that's not a good idea. And before we could stop her, she was like, three, two, one. And Bailey ran down the hallway. She started sprinting, so of course, we started running too. We didn't know what else to do. So we all kind of broke up into groups. Mackenzie and I ended up together and then Lucy and Bailey ended up together. I don't know where they ended up, like a different part of the church. The church was so big. So Mackenzie and I are like ducking around corners, like running down different hallways. We finally come to this door and it's locked. So we have to like make a U-turn. We go down this hallway and then we go to open the door and Judy's standing right there. Mackenzie literally screams at the top of her lungs. It was like the scariest thing ever. I honestly don't know how she found us before we found out where we were. I don't know. I mean, she obviously worked at this church, but she knew the exact location of which we ran to. I don't know if she was looking at cameras or if she's just really smart or maybe we were being extremely loud and it was obvious. Either way, she grabbed us by our hands, like kind of handcuffed our hands with her hands and then started marching down the hallway. Like she was pissed and I didn't know where she was taking us, but I looked over at Maddie and just started bursting into tears of laughter. I have this thing I've mentioned in other videos, but when I feel extremely uncomfortable, awkward, really any sort of emotion, I laugh uncontrollably. Like 
it's just a natural reaction I have and it's gotten me in a lot of trouble over the years like if it's not an appropriate time to laugh or it's just really uncalled for to laugh like something bad happened or something really sad I don't know why I can't help it I just that's what I do to show emotion of any kind if I'm scared like really anything and I just didn't know how to feel in the situation like we got caught and she was handcuffing our arms and marching down the hallway just like muttering to herself super angry and this is a pregnant lady and that means she must have freaking chased us like just take a moment picture a pregnant lady running down the hallway trying to like find us like behind the closed door and then we open it and she's right there and she's like grabbing us like I don't think she should have been running if she was pregnant but anyways I was like cracking up I couldn't even look at Maddie I was just like she continues to march us down this hallway and then we end up downstairs by this huge glass door like it's an office building for the people who work at this church and we see Bailey and Lucy who are sitting on this bench with another church worker person probably one of Judy's friends she probably called for backup or something I don't know how they got caught but they're sitting on the bench and then I look over at them and I start laughing even more so this is really pissing Judy off like she's mad she's like why are you laughing this isn't a laughing matter and that's just making me laugh even harder so they lead us into the glass room they sit us down and then Judy's little friend is over there blocking the door as if we're gonna try to run out which honestly we probably would have because we were just not having it like we wanted our frosty and at this point we knew we were going to be in trouble so we just kind of wanted to dip like flee out of that room but she's blocking the door so we're stuck in this room and mind you small group is pretty much like halfway over at this point they ended up keeping us in this room until like 11 o'clock like youth group was a couple hours done with I don't remember what time youth group got out but I think it was like nine ish so we were there for like a very long time before we were actually able to leave and we were bailed out of this little jail room Judy's walking in a circle arms crossed just like fuming angry and I I don't know if you guys have ever seen an angry pregnant person but it is a sight let me tell you I don't know I just feel like it makes people like 10 times funnier when they're angry when they're pregnant because she was just like really angry and she had this like big belly and also we didn't even know her like I had never seen her before at this church because I wasn't like super regular with the youth group I don't know if she was new there or what but she kept saying I'm so disappointed in you girls and I'm just like you don't even know me you certainly don't know my friends who've never been to this church so we were just kind of like this is being taken way too far. And again, going back to the whole, I feel like people should feel comfortable at youth group. Did she really think my friends were ever going to want to come back at this point? Like, it just got a little bit out of hand. And of course I understand where she was coming from. Like we were being disrespectful, trying to run out of there and whatnot. But again, we were kids. This isn't woulda, coulda, shoulda story time. This is what happened. I'm just like telling you guys. So we're in this room and she starts interrogating us like, what are your names? Why are you guys here? Where were you guys going? And she was acting like we were lying. We were like, hey, like we said earlier, we were trying to get a frosty at Wendy's because our friends who are our ride home, they are there waiting for us. And she just didn't believe our story for whatever reason. She acted like we were up to no good. And I guess I see how that could have looked, but uh, at the same time, what on earth did she think we were doing? Like, I don't understand. So we refused to give Judy our names because my friends, they were honestly going to be fine if they gave their real names, but they had this church database, which was a record of everyone's names, photos, I believe, email addresses, parents' addresses, like all the contact information. And I was in there because I was a member of this church at Wonderland Church. So I knew that I could not give her my real name because she had said straight away, like, what are your guys' names? I'm going to look you up in the database. So we all came up with fake names and it was really funny because there were people at our school. So we're all looking at each other like, oh my gosh. I wasn't the one who started it. I believe that it was Lucy. So everyone just kind of went along with it. And like I said, they really didn't have any reason to get fake names. I was the only one who was at any risk. So of course I did. And I was very careful to try to give them a name of someone that I did not think went to the church that I did not think could possibly be in the church database, but she was. So I told her this fake name she ended up looking up that person and calling their phone number and then the girl answers and she's like hey uh are you at youth group right now and she didn't believe us like at all but she wanted to figure out who we were and the girl answered the phone number and the phone number happened to be in the database so I was just like crap like what am I gonna do oh no now she's calling this girl I go to school with and then as she's on the phone with this girl I'm pretending to be Lucy leans over and she's like hey Allie blah 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 whispers something Judy's friend hears her and she goes wait what did you say her name's Allie and then Lucy and I are like <laughs> no no Allie's upstairs that's our other friend Allie no I'm blah 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 
uh, whatever my name was. So Judy, who's on the phone with my imposter, the girl I'm like impersonating, she's like, Hey, by the way, do you happen to know an Allie? The girl's like, Allie Hardesty? And she's like, oh, okay, thank you, bye. And hangs up the phone. So then she goes to look up my name, so now I'm screwed, and I'm just like, crap, oh my gosh. She finds my parents' phone number, calls my mom, and keep in mind, I was the only one with strict parents. Like, Mackenzie, Lucy, Bailey, none of their parents would have cared at all if they got a phone call like that. They probably wouldn't have even answered, or they would have just been like, okay, so what? My mom would have been pissed, and she was. So Judy calls my mom, and I love how when she called my mom, she didn't even acknowledge the fact that we were trying to go to Wendy's, or that our friends who were our ride home, that she let them leave. She didn't acknowledge any of that. She just called my mom and was like, Hey, yeah, your daughter, she's trying to leave youth group. We don't allow that, and it was very inappropriate and disrespectful. We have her locked in our office right now, and she's not allowed to leave until a parent or guardian comes to pick her up. So my mom rushes over, thinking that we're being super scandalous, and she's the type of parent where it doesn't matter what happened, if she's getting a phone call from a person at all, like an adult, a parent, she's not happy like she's pissed like it doesn't matter why she was called it's the fact that she was called at all for any reason of like something i did that was bad so she comes to pick us up and judy walks us out to the car and continues to tell my mom like yeah your daughter and her friends they just they just left you through and we don't allow that and i'm just looking at judy like all right you you want to keep going with this like you want to keep this up watch me never come back okay we get in the car, my mom takes us home, she drops off my friends, and as she's dropping them off, they're all like, I'm sorry, Mrs. Hardesty, as they get out of the car, and the whole car ride, I could not contain my laughter. My mom was getting really mad, like, I don't want to hear it, because I would start laughing, and I was like, I'm sorry, mom, and she's just like, stop, stop. Like, she was really mad, and I get it, because she went to that church every week, and she gets a call saying that she needs to pick up her daughter, who's being held captive in this room at like 11 p.m., so we go home and I was grounded, needless to say, for like a few months, like a while. I didn't have my phone for like a very long time. That's kind of what my parents did when I was like in trouble or grounded. They just like took away my phone and like any type of electronics. And then fast forward a couple months later, I actually ended up going back to the youth group. I didn't want to let that one lady, Judy, ruin my experience at Wonderland because it was a really good church and I really did enjoy it. And that was a church that like a lot of my friends went to because it was a really big one. So when I finally go back to the church and I'm placed in a small group, guess who my small group leader was? Just take a wild guess. Yes, it was Judy. And that was real awkward. I honestly didn't even recognize her at first because at this point she had had the baby. So she no longer had this big stomach. And I ended up writing her an apology note. I think I gave her a gift card to Starbucks or something. And I was like, I'm sorry for being disrespectful in that whole incident when you guys like told us in the room and stuff. And then Judy and I were cool. Overall, I think that youth group is a really positive thing and it's a lot of fun. But when people at church kind of make you feel like you're forced to be there and you can't leave, then that's when I feel like people aren't going to want to go anymore. And my friends never went back to the church, I'll tell you that much. But if you guys enjoyed the story time, be sure to leave a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more. Leave a comment if you've ever had a similar experience like this one. Again, no shade at this church is a really good church and like I still go there whenever I pass through Brentwood. Follow my social media if you guys wanna like chill outside of YouTube. I have it all linked everywhere and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later alligators, bye.